Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 25th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I wrote up a quick story today about, well, uh, just uh, some bad user interface design in information security tools, in particular when you're talking about consumer-based tools. The reason I wrote about this is that I, you know, as many of you, I imagine, often get asked for help uh, from friends, neighbors, dog park, acquaintances and such uh, about uh, issues they have had with their mobile phones, with their computers, and so often it's, well, uh, really not much, but sometimes actually gets worse because of bad user interface design, in particular how some of the security tools are almost flooding you with pretty much useful alerts, which then of course desensitizes some users to fall for fake alerts. And that's sort of an issue that uh, I ran into recently. And that sort of prompted a little bit that uh, post. Also that if you are trying to understand more about the alert, well, uh, these tools are often not that forthcoming with the necessary details to actually uh, help you understand what's going on. This is not a specific tool I'm talking about here. I find that this is pretty much true for more or less any of, in particular, the consumer targeting uh, security tools. And part of it, I think, is that in particular when it comes to alert messages, the goal here is less to inform the user, but more to essentially make a sale, uh, show value to the user that, hey, the tool apparently did something good for you. But that's exactly what the bad guys are going for then. Their messages are then also designed to make a sale just uh, with their fake support hotline and such, which of course leads to both tools using pretty much the same language, the same type of pop-up message. And Orca Security has an interesting blog post, in particular if you're using Google Kubernetes Engine or, well, for that, uh, probably should read this if you're using any of the Google Cloud products. The problem here is how users or administrators of these systems are assigning roles. And Orca noted a somewhat common misconfiguration where the system authenticated group is being given the cluster admin role. And what this means is system authenticated, that's anybody who is authenticated to Google. So this includes anybody who has a Gmail account or any kind of valid Google account now has cluster admin privileges on your systems, giving them full access to anything in your Kubernetes environment. Apparently, Google is aware of this problem. And in newer Google uh, Kubernetes uh, versions, they say here 1.28 and up. Uh, this is no longer possible. But apparently, there are still some out there that suffer from this misconfiguration or other sort of subtle uh, misconfigurations when it comes uh, to how your users are authenticated. Definitely worthwhile reading uh, this particular blog post uh, to better understand what the different options are here and how they can be exploited if they're misconfigured. And Pwn to Own had a specific automotive contest running and the results are now out from it. Well, Somewhat expected, there were a lot of new Saturdays demonstrated, 24 in total. For example, Synactive was able to get a root on a Tesla car's modem. There were also some vulnerabilities being dis demonstrated in electric vehicle charging stations. As typical for pwn to own contests, uh, the vendor now has 90 days to fix these vulnerabilities before any details are being announced. And then we have more exploits for the recent Bluetooth keystroke injection vulnerability. That's CBE 2023-45866. This time for Android devices. Now patches are available if you're running on a newer version of Android. So definitely apply the update. I believe it's Android 11 and above uh, older version of Android, your best bet is to make sure the device is not discoverable. 
And then miscellaneous vulnerabilities. If you do own a D-Link DIR859 router, unplug it, throw it out because it's vulnerable and no patch will be available. And this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. Congratulations to all the recipients of our Dean's List Award at sans.edu this year. Long list, too long to mention them all here. And talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.